So today we're going to be looking at institutionalisation and in particular some studies on Romanian orphans. So we're going to look at what is an institution and describing the effects of institutionalisation. So what effects does it have on the person in terms of their physical, their cognitive and their intellectual development, but also their ability to attach. And we're going to look at that within the context of a particular study um, about Romanian orphans. And then finally, we're going to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of studying the effects of institutionalisation. So first things first is that you need to know what institutionalisation is, and it refers to living, the effects of living in an institutional setting. And this could be a hospital or a care home, but it must be where children live for a long and continuous period of time. So they're in a care home for <clears throat> potentially their whole childhood and adolescence or a very long period of time of their childhood. And often, but not always, there is very little emotional care provided here. And why we're studying this is because psychologists want to know the effects that it has on their attachment. How do they attach to other children, to adults, etc.? Um, and how do they attach as later in later in life? But also their effects on, as I said, their cognitive, emotional, and intellectual development. So there are many effects of institutionalization, and I've given you a range here. The most striking one is about their physical development. And actually, they found that children who live in institutions are generally physically smaller. And it shows that the lack of emotional care has actually affected their physical state as well as their emotional state. And that's really important. So this is known as um, developmental dwarfism, where your emotion, a lack of emotional care has caused you to be physically smaller. And that's really important because actually we don't think that, we don't generally think that um, emotional care would be linked with physical development, but it really is. We also know, as we've talked about before, that their intellectual functioning is lower. So they generally have a lower IQ. And if you think back to what we learn about in Bowlby's maternal deprivation, this follows that Bowlby suggested that actually they had lower IQ if they'd been in an institution. We also know that they're more likely to be poorer parents. Um, so they don't know how to deal with stressful situations such as parenting and therefore they also don't know how to look after and tend to and nurture a child's needs and that leads to poorer parenting when they become parents themselves. They also form disinhibited attachment which actually is a fourth attachment type of um, Ainsworth uh, which Ainsworth suggested and it's again an insecure attachment where they're very attention seeking and they're clingy because they are worried that their caregivers will leave and that causes a really um, difficult time and attachment type for those children. They obviously don't have a lack, uh, internal working model that is effective because they don't have any like proper personal real relationships because they haven't had um, the ability to form close friendships or relationships with other people because people are always moving around in institutions and they're not always in one place. They also don't know how to control their emotions and as Bowlby said in his maternal deprivation theory that this can also lead to affectionless psychopathy which is a really extreme version where they cannot control their emotions and they start to not feel guilt and hide those emotions towards others. And the final one is quasi-autism and it's found that sometimes children in these settings don't know how to deal with emotional context because, again, they don't have that internal working model. And this isn't that they, are, that they would be diagnosed autistic otherwise if they'd grown up in a nurturing environment, but it's only because of the environment that they've grown up in that has caused them to show these behaviours, unlike in, in um, autism where it's actually a biological trait. Now, you need to be aware of the main differences between institutional care and family care. So you've got to imagine that if you're in a care home or a hospital, you don't tend to have an attachment figure. There's no um, equivalent mother or father for you. 
you're also more likely to have less to do. There's not often um, as many activities provided for or toys to play with um, because it's generally run by state government and therefore is poorly and underfunded. You're not cared for well. Each person who is um, in the care home who is responsible for looking after you actually generally has a lot of people to look after and therefore no one of those children is a priority for them. And therefore you're less sociable because actually you don't trust the adults because they don't have time for you and therefore you also don't trust the children because you know that they are also struggling too. Um, and you can see that's very different to family care because there's a strong emotional attachment, you're well provided for, you're always thought about and you're stimulated all the time with lots of communication and talk and activities. So we're going to be looking at some orphan studies today and this orphan study is concerned where children are placed into care because their parents have either died or they've been abandoned by them or not looked after. Um, and a really sad but um, opportunity came up where in Romania they, the president asked made um, women have five children. All women across the country had to have five children um, so that they would boost the economy. However, this led to lots of Romanian parents not being able to afford their children. And so they ended up in these huge orphanages in very poor conditions. But there was a major revolution. People weren't happy with this. And afterwards, lots of the children actually got adopted. And some were even adopted by British parents. The problem were that the orphanages lacked medicines and care and they were often left on their own in these cots for days on end and they were malnourished and they didn't respond to them at all. Um, the children weren't um, friends with each other and were very scared and the bedrooms were infested and they were living in very horrible conditions. Some of the children were even subject to sexual and physical abuse um, and the children didn't trust adults or any other children. Um, the rain would come in through the roof. They had really horrible conditions. And then at the age of 18, most of them were just kicked out onto the streets. So this study was conducted by Rutter et al. in 2011 to look at these Romanian, some of these Romanian orphans and compare how the Romanian orphans did who were adopted into British care or the Romanian orphans who remained in the institutions for longer. So they, um, they looked at 111 who were adopted before the age of two, and this is a significant time because we know that zero to two is a critical period in development and when you're most likely to form an attachment with a caregiver. And if you don't by this age, then it's going to have serious negative effects. So they looked at some who, ad who were adopted before the age of two and then a further 54 who were adopted by the age of four. And they assess their physical, their cognitive and their emotional development. And those are going back to those kind of things like their physical development, their IQ, their um, internal working model at the ages of 4, 6, 11 and 15. So we can tell that this is a longitudinal study and that we're collect therefore collecting data over a long period of time. The information was gathered in interviews of parents and teachers. So again, we're collecting um, more qualitative data and that was being analysed. They also looked at a group of 52 children who adopted around the same time who were a control group to see to have a comparison with. And these children were also adopted before the age of six months, so very early on. At the time of adoption, so immediately after they'd been adopted, it was noted that the Romanian orphans lagged behind their British counterparts. So generally they were much smaller, they weighed less, they had lower IQs. And by the age of four, some of the children had caught up. And this is really this is a real positive showing that actually if they were given the opportunity to form um, positive relationships and put into um, 
a environment with positive emotional care and support, actually they did manage to have a positive effect on that child. Um, and this was very true for those who are adopted before the ages of six months old. When the children first arrived in the UK, so those who had been adopted by British people, half of the adoptees had intellectual disability disorder, i.e. they had very low IQs and they were very malnourished. So they, they were physically very thin, they hadn't eaten much and they'd had a very poor diet of whatever they'd eaten. But at age 11, they had shown rates of recovery. So their IQ had increased, but it depended on whether, when they'd been adopted. So if they'd been adopted at the age of six months, they had an average IQ of 102. Remember that the average IQ for a person in the UK is 100, so they had a very average IQ. But it was 86, which is much lower for those adopted between six months and two years. So this is showing a massive difference just in those that critical period about how much it has an impact. And they had an IQ of 77, which is really low for anyone who had adopted children after the um, eight, after two years old. And this difference was still shown at 16 years old. So when they were taking their GCSEs, it was still having a massive impact on how they were able to perform in their GCSEs. So in terms of their attachment, on the other hand, so we've looked at the emotional and the cognitive um, and the intellectual, we're looking at the attachment now. Children adopted after six months did show signs of disinhibited attachment. So they were negatively affected. They had an insecure attachment. They were very clingy. They were very attention seeking and they didn't know how to deal with adults. So they didn't have an effective internal working model. So they would talk to strangers and um, people that they knew they were familiar with in the same way because they didn't know how to deal and distinguish between different adults. But those who adopted before the age of six months didn't generally show um, an insecure attachment. So you might want to think now, what's the point of studying the British children? What effects the institutionalisation are evident in the findings? What can we conclude from the study? And why is it unlikely that these results are generalisable to all children? So pause the video and have a think. So hopefully you should have said that the point of studying the British children was to provide a control group um, and it's evident that there were clearly physical um, under development, they had intellectual disability disorder and they had disinhibited attachment. Um, we're going to go on to the conclusion in a second but if we think about the participants in the study were obviously not able to be randomly allocated to the conditions. This is an issue because of participant variables and that will affect the results and therefore it might mean that we can't actually apply it to other, um, other institutional care findings. In terms of the challenge, there are long term effects that may be less severe than previously thought. So actually maybe they can recover and maybe the um, damage isn't irreversible. So in conclusion, the study suggests that the long term consequences may be sev less severe than was thought if children had the opportunity to form attachment. I, even though Bowlby said that actually children, if they were, if, if the children um, weren't looked after and didn't have an effective internal working model, then they would never form relationships. Actually, maybe that's not true. Maybe actually it, they still have a chance of developing effective relationships and provide, showing that they have good cognitive abilities, intellectual abilities and emotional um, intelligence. And therefore, it can, children can recover. And this is a really positive thing. This means that for in terms of real world application that children can be provided with um, if they're provided with effective care then children can actually make a real success of life and they don't need to be um, hindered by the fact that they were in an institution so you want to think about evaluating the effects of institutionalization so my four main points are it made a massive improvement in institutional care it highlighted the problem of institutions and actually they made significant changes to this 
um, for example, caregivers are given less children to look after. So each caregiver um, within the institution is given fewer children. And this means that they have specialist key workers who are consistent and given to them and looked after by those key workers. However, as I said, the children weren't randomly allocated. You couldn't decide who went to the British parents and who um, stayed in Romania. And that meant that it might be that the children who were who had gone to who were who had gone to Britain or the children who were adopted earlier were just the more sociable children in the first place, and therefore they are going to show higher um, emotional intelligence. Um, it's also difficult generally to show cause and effect because children who end up in orphanages have often had really awful experiences. But these children were just put in there because they couldn't afford to look after them. So they hadn't actually had a really negative or a lack of emotional care before, which means it's more easy to show cause and effect and therefore increasing the external validity of the study. However, Romanian orphan study might lack into external validity, as the quality of the care was so poor in this, these institutions in Romania compared to anywhere else. Like in the UK at the moment, children aren't, uh, do not experience that level of poor quality care. And therefore, can we really apply it to the, the extreme effects to how children um, in the UK would behave? Probably not. Thanks for listening.